Welcome to Countards. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the internal rate of return, or the IRR. We're specifically going to look at how to calculate it using the trial and error method. Now, there are various ways you can calculate the internal rate of return, one of which is using Excel, Microsoft Excel, and we've done that before. We'll leave the link to that lesson in the description below. Another way to do it is by using a financial calculator, and we have done that using various financial calculators. We'll leave the link to those in the description below as well. But how do you do it using the trial and error? Well, first, what is the internal rate of return? The internal rate of return or the IRR relates to the net present value or the NPV. It is a rate at which the NPV equals zero. Okay, and not to confuse between NPV and IRR, NPV is a value, okay, like a rent amount or a dollar amount. And IRR is a percentage, okay? So the IRR is a percentage that you use to discount cash flows that will make the NPV zero, okay? So that is the internal rate of return. If the IRR is greater than the required rate of return or the cost of capital, the NPV is positive. That means that the project is accepted. Okay, it's important for you to understand these notes here because it will apply when we are doing the trial and error method. Okay, so if the IRR is greater than the required rate of return or the cost of capital, that means that the NPV is positive. Okay, when you calculate it or when you discount it using the cost of capital or the required rate of return. So that means obviously that the project would be accepted. If the IRR is equal to the required rate of return or the cost of capital, the NPV equals zero. Okay, and like I said, the IRR is a rate at which the NPV equals zero. So if the required rate of return is the same as the IRR that you have for this particular project, that means that the NPV that you will get is equal to zero. And we're going to use the required rate of return and cost of capital interchangeably. Okay, they're the same thing here. If the IRR is less than the required rate of return or the cost of capital, that means that the NPV is negative and the project is therefore rejected, okay? So if you are looking at a particular project and it has a required rate of return, if the IRR that you calculate is less than that required rate of return, that means that the NPV is negative and the project would be rejected. That's how you'd answer a question like that, or that's how you'd look at the IRR in relation to your net present value. I hope these notes are making sense, okay? So here's the internal rate of return, and here's the steps to remember when you're calculating the internal rate of return using the trial and error method. The first one is to remember that you are trying to find the closest positive and the closest negative NPV, okay? So these are steps that you'll follow, and it might not make sense now, but it will when we go through the example just now, okay? So you need to remember that you're trying to find the closest positive and the closest negative NPV for you to calculate the IRR using the trial and error method. You will first need to calculate the net present value using the required rate of return or the cost of capital you are given. Okay, so that's the first step. You calculate the NPV using the required rate of return. If the NPV that you get is positive, that means that the IRR is higher than the required rate of return. Therefore, you will need to guess a higher rate than the required rate of return and recalculate the NPV, okay? So we're using the trial and error method. It's a longer method to calculate the IRR because you will be recalculating the NPV using various percentages, okay? So if you calculate the NPV using the required rate of return that you are given and the NPV is positive, that means that the IRR is higher. So you will need to guess a higher number than the required rate of return and recalculate the NPV. If the NPV is negative, that means that the IRR is lower than the required rate of return. Therefore, you will need to guess a lower rate than the required rate of return and recalculate the NPV. And like I said, it may not make sense to you now, but it will make sense when we go through the example. So let's go into the example. Here's the first example. A company is considering investing in a project and wants to know whether it should accept it. The cost of capital for the company is 10%. The initial investment is 10,000 rand. The cash flow is as follows, and we are asked what is the internal rate of return or the IRR for the project. Now, we have calculated the net present value before. We've done that using the table, and that's what we're going to do here. But here, we're just going to go through it very quickly. 
So if you'd like a thorough understanding of calculating the NPV using the table and using the present value factor, you'll find the links to those lessons in the description below. So the first thing that we do, step one, is to calculate the net present value using the required rate of return or the cost of capital, which we are given. It's a 10%. So what I like to do here, you can see we have year one all the way to year four, okay? And we know that year zero is a negative, which is the initial investment. So what I like to do is to add my year zero into this table. So I'll put year zero here and I put that minus 10,000. Remember the initial investment is always put as a negative. And like I said, you can refer to the other lessons where we explained on how to calculate the net present value using the table. The second thing that we do is to do the present value interest factor. Okay, and we get that from the table and it's a table like this one here. And remember, this is the present value interest factor for a single amount or for a lump sum. And how do you know that? You'll see that all the numbers start with the zero, okay? You can see here all the numbers, all the present value factors start with zero. And that's how you know this is the one you use, okay? When you are putting in the factor for each cash flow from year one to year four. And we know that the cost of capital is 10%. So this is the other one we're going to use. We have 10% here. And these are the present value factors we're going to use, okay? From year one all the way to year four. So you can see this is year one, period one all the way to your four at 0 0.683, okay? So we're going to put them in our present value factor column. Okay, you can see here, I just took them from that table that I just showed you and I plugged them here. And by the way, you can also use any calculator to get these present value factors. And I showed that using a simple calculator, you'll find the link to that lesson in the description below if you do not want to use the table or you do not have the table, but it's easy to get the table even if you Google it, okay? And then once I've done that, I need to multiply the cash flow by the present value factor and I will have the present value for each year. Okay. And that is what I have done. I've multiplied each one. I have the present value for each year. And then all I need to do is just to sum up the present values here and I will have the net present value. Okay. So I have summed them up from minus 10,000 all the way to the last one. And it gives me 1,776 rand 52 cents. What does it mean? The net present value is positive. And what did I say if the net present value is positive? Well, let's go back to our notes. I said here, if the net present value is positive, the IRR is higher than the required rate of return. Therefore, we'll need to guess a higher rate than the required rate of return and recalculate the NPV. What we want is the closest positive NPV to zero and the closest negative NPV to zero. Okay. And that is how we'll be able to calculate our internal rate of return precisely. I know my IRR is greater than the required rate of return. So I need to guess a higher number than the 10%. Okay. So let me try recalculate the NPV using 15%. Okay. So let's recalculate the NPV using 15%. Well, here's our table. Again, we go to 15%. Remember the initial table I showed you was from 1% to 10%. Now this one here is from 11%. 20%. So we have 15% here. So here are the present value factors we're going to use. Okay. From year one to year four. And then what I need to do is just plug them in the present value factors from year one to year four, and then just multiply the cash flow by the present value factor. And I have my present values. So what I did initially, I calculated the net present value using 10%. Now I'm calculating the net present value using 15%, which I guessed, okay? I guessed the higher number. And you can see that it gives me a net present value of 396 rand and 90 cents. That means that my IRR is still higher than the required rate of return. Why? Because my NPV is positive, okay? If I use 15%, that means that my NPV is positive. That means my IRR is greater than 15%. So I need to guess a higher number again. So what do I need to do? I need to guess 16%. So let me guess 16%. And there it gives me a net present value of 150 rand and 33 cents. Okay, I know that my IRR is still higher because I'm still getting a positive here. So let me guess a slightly higher number because we are closer to zero. I guess 17% and it gives me the net present value of 87 minus 87 rand 49 cents. That means my internal rate of return is between 16% and 17%. Why? Because at 16% it's positive, at 17% it's negative. Okay? And that is what I meant when I said you want the closest positive NPV and the closest negative NPV to zero. And we know the IRR is between those two numbers. So I know my IRR is between 16% and 17%.
So what do I need to do? I just need to use the formula. So there is my NPV at 16% and there is my NPV at 17% which we have just calculated. Okay, you do it in the exact same way we did it when we began with 10%. Okay, so I know my IRR is between 16% and 17%. Now, here's the formula that you will use. The IRR equals to the lower rate plus the sum of the higher rate minus the lower rate times positive NPV divided by positive NPV minus the negative NPV. Okay, that formula can look complicated, but it's not. What do I mean? Lower rate is the rate that the npv is positive okay which is the 16 percent obviously so the lower rate will be the 16 percent the higher rate here is 17 percent minus the lower rate of 16 percent and then i multiply that by the positive npv which is the 150 rand 33 cents okay divided by the positive npv which is the same 150 rand minus the negative npv now you look here when i say minus you can see that my negative NPV is already negative, obviously. So minus and a minus makes it positive. So what we are doing in essence is just adding. We're going to take 150 rand 33 cents plus the 87 rand 49 cents. We're going to put it as if it's positive, okay? Because negative and a negative make a positive. And we should get our answer, okay? And here we have it. Our IRR equals to the 16% plus open bracket 17% minus the 16% close bracket times the positive NPV of 150 rand 33 cents divided by the sum of the two NPVs, okay? Just putting them as if they are positives. And we should get our answer. And our IRR is 16.63%, okay? So the first thing that you'll need to do, obviously, when you're plugging into your calculator is do what you have here, okay? Calculate the denominator here, the positive NPV minus the negative NPV. And remember, it's just like adding two positives together, okay? And then you will take the positive NV NPV divide by that answer. And then you multiply by the sum of the higher rate minus the lower rate, which is the 17 minus 16%, which is going to give you 1%, okay? And just put them as numbers, okay? Don't put them as percentages. If you put them as percentages, you'll have to multiply by 100 later on. But if you put 17 minus 16 gives you 1, and you take 1 times the sum of all these, and then you just add 16 plus 16. It should give you 16.63, which you know is a percentage. And that is how you calculate the IRR using the trial and error method. Again, you find the positive NPV that is closest to zero, and then you also find the negative NPV that is closest to zero, and then you apply this formula and you should be able to get your answer. Now, you need to remember this. Why are we doing this long method? The closer you are to zero with both the positive and the negative NPV, the more precise you will be, okay? The more correct you will be with your IRR. Okay, so the closer you are to zero with both the positive and the negative NPV, the more precise you will be. And that is what we did, okay? We tried to get the positive NPV where it's closer to zero and the negative NPV where it's closest to zero. And that gave us a precise answer. The IRR is 16.63%. If you use the calculator or use Excel, it should give you the exact same answer, okay? Now, let's say, for instance, you just took your 10% and you calculated your NPV, okay, using the 10%, and then you just guessed 17% and it gives you a negative of 87.49. Okay, what would the answer be? Let's say you didn't guess 15, then you didn't guess 16, and then 17. Let's just say you took the 10% that you initially calculated the NPV with and the 17% that you guessed. Okay, what would the answer be? Well, if you apply the same formula that we have given here, well, you should get 16.67%. You can see the answer is not too far off, okay? It's by a few decimals. It's by 0.04%. Okay, that's the difference between this answer and the answer we got previously. Now, you may be marked correctly for that one. But to be more precise, you want to get the closest positive. Okay, because we know 17% is the closest negative. You want to get the closest positive, which was at 16%. But you can see the answer will not throw you too far off. Okay, so that's why this formula works well when you're calculating the internal rate of return. Here's what I want to do. I want to do the second example. But what I want you to do is that as I open the example, I want you to pause the video there and try and calculate the internal rate of return before you continue to gauge whether you really understand how to calculate the IRR using the trial and error method. Okay, so here's the example. 
We are told that Sittight Limited, a company that manufactures chairs, is considering the purchase of a machine for 65,000 rand. The expected cash inflows generated by the machine are as follows. And we are given the cash flows from year one to year five. And then we are told that after the five year period, the machine is expected to have a scrap value of 5,000 rand. The company's required rate of return is 7%. What is the project's internal rate of return? You can attempt the question and then continue once you are done. Okay, I hope you attempted the question. So let's quickly do this one here. Now we've done the same example before when we calculated the net present value as well as the IRR using the calculators and the net present value using the table. So I'm not going to explain it here. We're just going to go through it quickly. Okay, now we have a scrap value at the end of year five after the five year period. Okay, of 5,000 rand. Now what do we know about that? Obviously, we're going to add it. We're going to take 5,000 and add it to the cash flow at year five of 9,000. Okay, so it's going to be 5,000 plus 9,000 and it will give us an answer of 14,000 rand. And that's what we put at year five. The second thing that we like to do, like I mentioned earlier on, I like to put my cash flow at year zero, which is the initial investment. Okay, so I'm just going to add year zero here and put the initial investment of 65,000 rand as a negative. Remember, we'll be paying to buy this machine. So that's what I have just done. And the third thing, obviously, is just to put the present value factor. Okay, and there we have it, the present value factor for each specific year. And remember, we find it from the table like I showed you earlier on. So you can look at it from the table and then we just multiply the cash flow by the present value factor for each specific year. And the net present value that we get is minus 963 rand. Okay, so we know that the net present value is negative. So what does that mean when we have to calculate the internal rate of return? Well, let's go back to our notes again. Here, remember, I mentioned that if the net present value is negative, the IRR is lower than the required rate of return. So we'll need to recalculate the NPV using a lower rate. Remember here we used 7%. Now we need to use a lower rate than 7% because the net present value is negative. Okay, so we have to guess a lower rate. Let's try 6%. So I'm going to put 6% and I'm going to find the present value factors for 6% for each specific year. And there we have it. And then we just multiply the cash flow by the present value factor. And then we sum the present values for each year together. And then we get the net present value of 785 Rand. Now the net present value is positive. Now we have at 7%, which is negative, at 6%, which is positive. Now we know that our internal rate of return is between 6% and 7%. Now here we have our two net present values. Okay, using 6% and 7%. Now we have to just use the same formula that we have been using and plug in our numbers. The lower rate here is obviously the 6% plus the higher rate, which is the 7 minus the lower rate of 6% times positive NPV, which is the 785 rand. And then divide that by the positive NPV, which is 795 minus the negative NPV. And remember, minus and a minus make a positive. So it's a positive NPV of 785. And then you put the negative NPV as a positive down here. Okay, so it's going to give you a positive answer. And there we have it. Okay, we have just put in all our numbers and we get an answer of 6.45%. That means that our internal rate of return is 6.45%. Okay, and that is how you calculate the internal rate of return using the trial and error method. I hope it has made sense. I hope I was able to explain it thoroughly and clearly. If you have gained value from this lesson, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and share it to those you think it might help. Till next time, cheers.